The rational consumer. Rational. Rational. How do consumers make choices? We talked about this with buying motives, uh, but also it plays into what their expectations are and how much they should be able to trust the stores, for example. So this is a short video, but I like it. The rational consumer. You know, all these products are sold the way they are because of years of psychological studies done on consumers like us. I wonder, if shoppers better knew those studies and the tricks of the trade, would it help us to make better purchasing decisions? Um, 
Where's the attractive, I guess? Well, the attractive salespeople tend to induce a stronger desire to purchase a product. Unless, of course, you're a woman, and if you found her a little bit too sexy, you wouldn't buy the product at all. But because you're a man, if you actually thought she'd worn that item of clothing, you'd be willing to pay more for it. Let's think so. I'm going to think that she's been wearing the clothing I'm trying on. I'm going to tell. 2008. What do I do then? Turn away now. Oh, no, no, no. Clark Wilberg and Ross say that arousal and happiness place a positive mood on subsequent judgments. Forget Clark and Millhouse or whoever, I'm not aroused. Okay, maybe a little. I think I'll be a good idea. Like a, like a Sinto business, uh, 
a, a shank business, then maybe you don't have the same guarantee because you're using it more than you should. Um, products must be of acceptable quality, that is safe, lasting, with no faults. They must look acceptable. In other words, they should also look the way that you ordered them. And they should do all the things that someone would normally expect them to do. So that is uh, the basic expectation of products. Um, there are a lot of different elements to this. Um, they have to match the description of either the website or the sales personnel or the one that you asked for. They must be fit for the purpose that you asked for, that you told them, that you were told that it would be fit for. They must uh, be completely owned by you. In other words, they, you know, you get into a thing with like Microsoft. You're kind of using their Microsoft Office, you're paying them, but do you own it? You don't really own it, right? Not carry any hidden charges, which is a very Australian thing. Um, so, yeah, so you get a guarantee for this. I uh, would like to see, well, let's see what happens here. Turn this one. years 
But if you want to extend it, then they can offer an extension. So sometimes with like a computer, they'll offer something like a warranty for maybe the, the government warranty is three years, but the company will sell you a package to repair the computer or solve your problems for five years. Then you have to decide whether or not you want to pay that extra money for the extra two years of benefit, not five. You get three from the government already, but they're really giving you or selling you two years of extra warranty, okay? So in the book, let's just make sure it's clear, a, warrant, a guarantee is a legal right to redress. Redress means repair, refund, or replace under consumer law. A warranty is not a legal right. It's written from the manufacturer of a product promising to repair or replace it within a specific or specified period of time. A warranty is voluntary, and most important to highlight, in addition to the guarantee. So the guarantee holds for everything. No company can tell you in Australia that they don't accept the guarantee. The government sets the guarantee. So I'll go back to the, to the text. Consumers are entitled to a guarantee or warranty on their purchases. They are also entitled to a refund where a product is faulty or falls or fails to fulfill its purpose. The aim of these requirements is to provide consumers with protection for the purchases that they make. Guarantees and warranty requirements are different for services and products. Service providers must take care to ensure services are carried out with duty of care. So duty of care is something we'll see later also with uh, safety in the workplace. Duty of care means that your both sides are responsible for certain things. So, for example, you buy a microwave oven and you use it the right way. If you don't put a spoon in it, it's not going to catch on fire. If you put the wrong thing in your microwave oven, it's your fault. You have to understand the instructions. That's duty of care. This means all materials are standard suitable for providing the promised level of service. The consumer must ensure that the service provider is clearly aware of the needs and expectations uh, of the consumer. The consumer has to let, you know, when they're buying something, it should be clear that they're buying it for the purpose that it's supposed to be used for. Business in society. Jack and Jill, which is different from our friend, what's his name? Palatano. Palatano. Jack and Jill, who run a small business in uh, by the Middleton Beach, renting bicycles for the day, have a duty of care or responsibility towards their customer to ensure that the bicycles are in good working condition uh, and that they are serviced to uh, regularly. They're maintained for use. Next page, 10. The consumer has the right to expect a safe, enjoyable experience of this bicycle or product. Therefore, the business must inform the consumer of any legal restrictions related to using the product. So they have to tell the consumer that they have to wear a helmet if they rent a motorbike, for example. It's not their fault. If they tell the consumer that they need a motorcycle helmet, or they should be provided with a helmet, and they don't wear it, then that's the fault of the consumer. The business must ensure the product is tradable, suitable for its purpose, and matches the description given. Consumers are responsible for checking the particular information when they make their purchase to keep them covered by warranties and guarantees. Uh, let's see, maybe we should do Marty, I don't know, maybe. <clears throat> Marty recently purchased a sound system set up at his home music studio. 
he continued playing music from the morning, dawn, until dusk. The next morning, he received a visit from the local police authority. The police came to his house. Why? Maybe he was listening to music from dusk till dawn. That makes more sense. Where he was warned over disruption to the neighborhood. He's playing his music too loud. Marty was advised to install some kind of soundproofing material to keep the sound in his house. Marty felt distressed as he had no financial capacity to install such material. He says the seller failed to inform the consumer of the requirements of use. I think Marty would lose his case. Can he really say reasonably that he doesn't realize that the volume of music bothers his neighbors? I don't think so. Can you expect the company to provide his house some kind of soundproofing to go into his house and to secure it so the sound does not get out? I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're making the point there because I think that there's no way that Marty's going to win that case. Alright, so, uh, the, so the, the, the business has responsibilities to the customer and then we also have some consumer responsibilities. So here is two sides. <clears throat> the product is of tradable quality that comes from the business and in that case it must meet basic safety, quality and performance standards where the price and description of the product. And the consumer's responsibility actually is to use the product in the way that's expected uh, or to use it following instructions. The product is suitable for purpose. It should be able to do the job or satisfy the need as indicated at the time of purchase. The consumer's responsibility is to use it as a home product and not as a product for business use. In that case, it might not last as long and it might, might not make sense to have industrial. They actually have certain blenders, for example, that are made specifically for commercial use to make money from, not for home use. Uh, product must match the pre-purchase sample or description. If demonstrated or presented to the consumer via some kind of advertising or in person, uh, television or in the shop, then the, the description and all the elements of the product, anything that's extra. If you show a picture with batteries and headphones, then you have to include the batteries and headphones. The consumer's responsibility is to check that product and to make sure that it has everything before they take it and buy it and finish paying for it. So if the, you know, if the consumer doesn't check it, then they might be responsible for what's missing. So those are the two sides. That's called duty of care. There are two sides to this. Um, let's look at some elements that a guarantee would not apply for, actually. There's a few things. First of all, let's say you ordered something and it absolutely did everything that it was meant to do, that was promised. You bought it and it worked, but then you just changed your mind. You changed your mind, you found it cheaper somewhere else, and you thought, okay, I'll just bring it back because I don't I want to get a cheaper one or I don't want to use it. Cannot. Cannot use a guarantee for something that's functional, works, and you just don't like it. Misuse the product that caused the problem. So if you did something with the microwave oven that you shouldn't have and then broke it, that's your fault. Uh, you knew of or were made aware of faults before you bought the product. So sometimes, like don't tell my wife, but I bought her an iPhone 6 Plus a few years ago and I got her the 6 Plus but it was um, from the factory. The factory repaired it. So somebody used it but it didn't work. They sent it back to the factory. The factory made it perfect, brand new, just like new. It was new, basically. It cost $200 less. So if I took that product and then I knew that it was uh, 
fixed before, and then I said to somebody, here, they have to take this back because it's not new. No, I was told already that it was repaired at the factory, and so I knew that that happened already. So it's not a surprise. I was aware of any faults before I actually bought the product. Last, I asked for a service to be done in a certain way against the advice of the business, and then it didn't work. So I, the business said, okay, if you want to install your air conditioner like this, you have to put it on this side of the room. And then I was unhappy with that. And because I decided I wanted to put it on the other side of the room, so that was my fault for requesting the change that was not recommended by, is against the advice of the business. So that's a good reason to put things in writing, especially if you have a service, right? If, you, um, if you're running a business where you need to do installation or you need to provide some kind of um, you know, service to the customer in order to make the product work, get that in writing because then the customer can come back to you and then argue that you had a different idea from them and that they weren't sure, they weren't clear about they, what they wanted and then you could have trouble in court from that. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at one more uh, video about the, what you can gain from or uh, what the responsibility that the Australian government has for returning goods. What kind of returning goods situation? Ooh, what limits are there? Is that the best quality video? Let's see. There are lots of 
products, fridges, freezers, washing machines that we keep for a long time. And for them, reasonable durability should be measured in years, even decades, not weeks or months. For example, you'd expect a candlestick like this to last for many years. So if it fell apart after, say, two years, you can still return it. You've really let yourself go. You can't return it without the original packaging. That's wrong. The consumer law says that you don't need the original packaging to return something. just need to be able to prove your purchase. And there's plenty of ways of doing that, whether it's credit card records, product serial numbers, or maybe even social media. <laughs> just say that someone is being different. Remember, it's the consumer's choice where you take things back. You can return them to the manufacturer if you want, but you can also return it to whoever you bought it from. The store can't hold you off to the manufacturer. And they can't charge you for it either. In fact, even saying there's a fee is illegal. You could go to jail. Actually, it's just fine. Shh. Even better, if you get something as a gift, you've got exactly the same consumer rights as if you've purchased it yourself. As long as you can show where it was bought, you can return your gift without a receipt, even without the original package. some limits in the consumer law to spoil your fun. You don't have the right to return goods if an unreasonable amount of time has passed. And you don't have the right to return goods if you damage them yourself. Most disappointingly of all, you don't have a clear right to exchange goods or get a refund if you've just changed your mind. Unless the shop's policy allows it. And some retailers will even do it out of the goodness of their heart. So it's always worth asking. But back to the cool stuff in the consumer world. If you're returning something and you think it's so unacceptable that you wouldn't have bought it in the first place, then it's your choice, not the store's, whether you get a refund or a replacement. Provided you're a reasonable person. Would you shut up? That's not very reasonable. As well as your money back, you've also got a right to compensation for any reasonably foreseeable loss. And that compensation can include the cost of transport for returning the goods. Yep, I know. Reasonable cost. And if the cost of returning it is significant, which it could be for something like a fridge, then the supplier's got to collect it at their expense. But remember, if the problem isn't a major one, it's the seller's choice of whether to refund or exchange. So you're at their mercy. And one last cool thing. Under the consumer law, any statement made by a product manufacturer or supplier when they're trying to sell it to you constitutes an explicit guarantee. So when you're shopping, you've got rights, and anything they say can and will be held against them. Getting faulty products and bad service can be annoying, and sometimes it's tempting to lash out. The consumer law is there to protect you, and you have the right not to remain silent. Service is annoying, but it's not giving the right to commit murder. Allegedly! So, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> that was one of the better videos from the checkout. That has a lot of great information. I will upload that video for you. But uh, everything in that video is very helpful for this, uh, this topic. Okay.
So, I'm going to finish this next section and then you'll be free for the weekend, except for your task, of course. I noticed that some of you didn't pick up your, your I don't know, why are you not picking up your, your drafts, your research? You really need it. Uh, I think that was a mistake. Alright, so, to follow up, if a product or service fails to comply with the guarantee or warranty, the customer is able to take action. There are many options available for the action. So, what can they do? Number one, customer action for a guarantee or a warranty. <clears throat> Resolve the issue with the business. If a product is either faulty or fails to satisfy expectations, it should be brought to the attention of the business. The customer must reasonably explain the dissatisfaction with the product to the seller and may suggest a preferred alternative. Repair, replace, or refund. <clears throat> the customer can request a service provider to repeat the service if it fails to meet the expectations. So if it's a painting job, they have to repaint, for example. Alternatively, the service provider can offer to pay for the service to be repeated by another provider or to refund the money. So maybe the painter just thinks that they can never please you and they just say, okay, well, I'll hire someone else. Two, the customer can put their complaint in writing giving details of the date, purchase, problem, and preferred remedy. <clears throat> so one thing to remember is that whenever there's a problem with uh, you, your, your contract is your receipt, right? The receipt that you get has a time, date of purchase, and the place, as well as the price. That's a contract. Today, we are in today's globalized world. We often don't have access to the manufacturer of a product. Many products are made in different countries overseas. In fact, probably most of them. So we, the way that Australia sets it up is that the responsibility for any purchase is going through the retailer, the place that you buy it. So that makes the retailer responsible for finding manufacturers that are safe, for dealing with wholesalers that are safe. And if there's a problem after that, if the retailer feels like they were tricked by the manufacturer, then the retailer will take their responsibility to the manufacturer. But you can't get a lawyer in China and go and sue a Chinese company for something that an Australian retailer sold you? That's impossible. So as a consumer, it would be absolutely unfair to make you go to the manufacturer. All of your redress, all of your complaints about the products go through the retailer. The retailer is your contract, and so that keeps everybody honest. It keeps everybody safe all the way down the line. Now, if someone is an importer of some Samsung phones that catch on fire, the importer is the one who bought the phones from Korea. They are the one that's going to have to do the second, you know, they they're already have experience with dealing with lawyers in both countries, so then they're, and to know the law in both countries, so they're the ones who will have to take some legal action against the manufacturer. Not you. You just go to the retailer. <clears throat> okay. So you uh, can try to resolve the, the issue with the business. You can put it in writing. And then if the complaint involves a local business, you can contact the consumer protection. And if not, you go to the A triple C homeboy. And then if nothing happens after that, you have the choice to take them to court and to claim damages, perhaps. So first, you should make sure that you have, uh, so you have the receipt. The receipt is the contract, so we already have that. So you go to the retailer and you try to solve the problem um, that they're supposed to give you a choice, basically, as long as it's a major problem, major fault, not like, you know, there's a little tiny mark on the phone. That's not going to work. That might be something that they can repair and not replace. They might have a choice in the shop. But if the product really doesn't work or it's broken, then you take it to the shop and try to get your preferred outcome. After that, you put it in writing and you should uh, give the shop one more chance to solve it. If not, then you go to either the local 
Consumer Protection Court of Western Australia or the ACCC. And then after that, you can actually file a real lawsuit if there's real damage from what happened. So it goes up. There's steps to go up. All right, so one last thing about warranties, and uh, they should have put this on the other page instead of this page, but what it's telling you is the same thing that I just said. So you have um, uh, statutory, state, statutory means state. The state gives an official warranty. So on the right side, Australian consumer law gives consumers the rights to a refund under certain conditions for a certain time period regardless of the warranty. The warranty is, doesn't matter for that. If it's two years by the government, the warranty is extra. Then you have voluntary warranties, also called a manufacturer's warranty. They are a warranty provided above the required state warranty. So the state might provide two years and then the company can say, we're gonna offer you four years, which is a nice thing to get and so you might buy the product. Keep in mind when you're doing marketing in 4Ps that a warranty of any kind is included in product. Businesses often offer a voluntary warranty as a way to highlight the quality of their products. So if they really think their product is going to work and they trust it like a car manufacturer, they might offer a 10-year warranty to show their confidence. So that's still given by the company for free. And then the other one is an extended warranty, which is an optional warranty above the statutory, above the law, that is offered for a price. So it's called extended warranty. So the government might support your computer to be <clears throat> guaranteed for three years, and then they might sell you uh, two more years to make it a five-year warranty. So, a product is regarded as faulty even if the customer has been using it for an extended time. For example, a washing machine, a television, a car, or other goods are expected to last a long time with normal use. If a vacuum cleaner breaks down after three months or a stereo after six months, the consumer can still take it back to the shop. So you really have that online. You can check those dates and how long it will be for each product before you buy or before you take it into the shop. So that's that for now. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Again, I really wish that you would come and pick up your things because you need them. So have a great weekend.